I got my nails did. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. Welcome to everyone who is new to the channel or who has just subscribed. I hope you enjoy these videos and that they are of some benefit to you. I'm gonna get to the actual video. So, I saw a comment saying, can I do a video talking about how to get back into fitness? Oh my goodness, yes. Yes, I can talk about that because I feel like I have a world of experience in that field. Being there, totally got like too many t-shirts. This video is a little bit different from how to get into fitness for the first time because it's going to cover the kind of emotional side of what you can go through once you've gone from exercising a lot or feeling good about your physical condition to suddenly feeling not good about it. Without further ado, here are my top five tips. Tip number one, which might seem a bit weird really, but it is to forgive yourself. I can only kind of explain this by talking about my experience. I used to train athletics since I was a child. So I did sprint hurdles, I competed internationally for my country. I, a fact of my childhood was that I was going to win an Olympic gold medal. I kid you not, part of me still believes that. I, I had this determination that I would not stop athletics until I'd at least competed in the Olympics, but in my head, competing meant gold. Um, so. I was committed to athletics, I, I lived, breathed, slept, ate athletics, it was my everything. And then when I went to university to study medicine, I found that I couldn't do everything. Uh, my grades really suffered as when I prioritised athletics, when I prioritised my grades, my athletics suffered. And in the end, I had to decide to stop athletics in order to do my degree. And that might sound like a small thing, but that was a huge thing for me. That was, that was my kind of childhood dream that I chose to stop. And I remember when I told my dad, my parents were very invested in my athletics, and he was, he was just sad. He, my parents were very much for education, so they understood completely. He was just so sad, and I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Because I was not only disappointing him, but I felt like I was disappointing myself and I was letting my childhood self down. You go from training full time to part time, it's very difficult um, when you're not seeing the same results. So in the end, I just stopped exercising. I stopped exercising because I couldn't stand seeing myself not do as well as I knew I could or I knew I should. So I was like, right, I'm not doing it at all. And I kind of gave it up. Um, and I would always joke to my friends like, oh, I'm turning to adipose, like, oh, the muscle tissue is turning to fat tissue. And then it actually started to happen. When it got to the end of second year, I realized that I'd let myself get into really bad shape. I had not looked after myself at all. I was eating terribly. I was slow, I was sluggish, and I wasn't strong. I didn't have this confidence in my physical ability that I had had. When it came time that I was like, enough is enough, I need to exercise, I need to train again. When it came time to going back into it, I put it off for so long. And do you know why? It was because every time I thought about it, I got that feeling again of disappointment. I remembered how much I had let myself down. I remembered how much I hated myself. I don't want to say hated myself. I remember how much I really despised the fact that I had let myself quit athletics, that I had let myself, let myself down. Um, so every time exercise came up, it came with those feelings. So I avoided it. I avoided the thought of exercise, of training, of athletics. I remember when my mum, me and my mum always used to watch athletics videos together and, and competitions, we'd follow all the stories. I completely stopped following them. My mum would my mum would call me to come and watch this race downstairs, and I couldn't I couldn't come and watch it with her like when I was home for holidays, because it just made me sad. It reminded me of all this disappointment, all these feelings and emotions that I had attached to what was essentially my fitness journey in, in athletics. And I got this mindset that I couldn't do it, that I was not fit anymore. I was not strong, and because the truth is, I wasn't. But I also kind of believed that I couldn't be anymore. And it was really negative. Now, if you think about it, we don't like, we as humans, we like positivity. We don't like negative 
thinking, we don't like negative feelings, we don't like negative comments. So if every time exercise comes up, so does a feeling of guilt, no wonder you avoid it. it no wonder I didn't want to talk about athletics, mention hurdles, I didn't want to know how my friends were doing, how they were getting on in championships. It's kind of like if you imagine that you aren't you, you are your friend. So say if you have this friend, and every time you go to exercise, your friend says to you, you can't do it, you're too slow, you let yourself go, you're not as good as you used to be. So every time exercise comes up in conversation with that friend, this friend starts reminding you of all your failures and how bad you've become. You wouldn't want to hang out with that friend anymore. You'd be like, okay, bye Felicia, bye bye, we don't hang out anymore. But if that friend is you, you can't escape you, so instead of escaping you, you escape the exercise in order to get rid of those negative thoughts and feelings. And then they build up more because you're not exercising and it's this vicious cycle of guilt. And that is why my first tip is to literally forgive yourself. There is a reason why you stopped whatever fitness thing you were doing. There are good reasons. Maybe there aren't good reasons. And your good reason is the fact that we're all human. We all make mistakes, we all go through different periods of our lives and you don't have to be perfect. None of us have to be perfect. Stop guilt tripping yourself. Stop saying, oh, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. I can't do this, I can't do that. Forgive yourself. I think we as humans, and especially as a Christian, I really believe this, that we as humans, we function best from a place of love and of grace. We're always taught to give other people the benefit of the doubt, but I'm a firm believer that you have to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You have to forgive yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to motivate yourself. And that starts with stopping the negative things. Stop telling yourself that you're not good enough. Stop telling yourself that you let your childhood self down. Stop telling yourself that that was a mistake. That was, whatever it is, it's in the past and all you bringing it up does is put it into your future and if it's a bad thing you want to leave it in the past so forgive yourself is my first point the fact that you're watching this video you, you want to get back into fitness you want to feel strong again get fit again and look however you want to look again that's what you should be focusing on that positive want that you have that's a really positive side of you so focus on the positives rather than on the negatives okay so my number one is 100% guilt-free forgive yourself because because you're okay you're all right you know you you made whatever decisions you made and you're still here and you're still fighting and you're looking to get back up and get back into it that is that's incredible so that is point number one my second point on how to get back into fitness is to start small to start small. The fact is you're not going to be able to do whatever it is you used to be able to do and that is okay, that is completely fine. So start small, ease your way back into it. If you used to be really fit and really active is that you can kind of put this really high expectation on yourself of oh cool yeah so by in two weeks from now I'm going to be squatting 100kg and I will run the London Marathon this year and I will blah 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 all these goals which you just need to just kind of shake off and just get rid of and just just focus on the little things you can do of like actually i'm gonna do this workout video online on a monday evening every monday evening i'm gonna do this and just start there and build your way up because number one if you put too much pressure on yourself you'll crumble under it so be gentle with yourself and also seeing yourself succeed at the little things is so encouraging when you do that workout that was actually super easy you're like huh maybe there's some more life in these old bones yeah and you can step it up and step it up to the next one that's so much better it's so much better to do the little one and be like oh that was a bit easy i'll do the harder one than to start with like trying to run 10 miles and failing at the 10 miles and then being like right i can't do it quit again so start easy because that really will encourage you. You see these really fit people, they all started somewhere. And I think it's so important to remember that. If you're doing a class or a workout video and you're watching it and you're thinking, oh my gosh, they're so good, I just wanna be there already, I wanna get there already. Well, remember that back to there was a time when they would have done that workout and they would have done just as well as you did. So no one starts there. Everyone has to go through the process of getting fitter and getting stronger. So there is no shame in starting small. When you see someone who's just starting out and I'm actually like, whoa, I'm so impressed because the fact is that 
that takes so much more courage than the guy who knows he's buff, knows he's fit, knows he's really strong. Of course he's gonna stro stroll into the gym all confidently or stroll into whatever workout class all confidently. Of course they will. Whereas the person who is just starting out, that takes so much more to show up and to give it your best shot and to be like dying through the class but still there. So yeah, start small, be patient with yourself and have no shame. That's kind of like three points in one, but that is point, oh am I swearing at you? That is point number two. Okay, so point number three of how to get back into fitness is to try everything. You know that saying, try everything in life at least once, apart from like drugs and stuff? I say that about fitness. Maybe when you used to be into fitness, whether it was 10 years ago or 10 weeks ago or whenever, you loved tennis, you were a star tennis player. Just because you're going back into fitness now doesn't mean that it has to be with tennis again. There are so many other ways. You might try Zumba and love Zumba. You might find that Zumba is your thing. You would never know that if you suck with tennis. So try everything, try weightlifting, try CrossFit, try HIIT, try athletics. Oh, I would recommend athletics. Athletics, oh my goodness. It is like the purest sport and it is so efficient and I'm, I miss it so much. <laughs> but yeah, no, I genuinely suggest you try everything. Try yoga, try Pilates, try boxing. Find your fit. Ooh, that's good. Cause it's like find your fit, but also find your fit. Don't know what I was gonna do that. Okay, so actually I have a method. I feel like I wrote this down. So what I use to choose how I work out is I have a three point method. Now this is gold. I should be selling this now, I'm kidding. But this is really good. So choosing the exercise that suits you and the activity that is gonna get you absolutely ripped. Fun, feasibility, and fruit. So fun, do you enjoy it? Feasibility, can you do it? Can you keep this up? And fruit, is it giving you the results that you want? Okay, so I am gonna use examples of where I've applied this. So, one of my goals in fitness is to have a really good cardiovascular fitness. I need to do cardio. And there are so many different types of cardio. What I tried was long distance running. For one summer, I ran half an hour every day. I know some of you will be thinking, Sarah, that's not long distance, but girl, for a sprinter, for, for someone with the fast switch fibers, that is a marathon, okay? Half an hour of steady running, oh, that's hard. And now I saw incredible results. So I leaned out, I lost weight, people were telling me I looked good, I felt so much fitter, I got, I got the fruit, I got the fruit, so that is one thing down. Feasibility, waking up and going out in the cold was not feasible anymore. So when summer ended, it wasn't feasible. And then fun. Was it fun? Did I enjoy long distance running? I cannot tell you how much I hated running long distances, guys. It was the worst thing ever. I like, just didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy it. And also, I had had knee surgery. All the road running was not good for my joints. It wasn't good for me. Overall, what did I get from long distance running? I got the results, but I hated it and it wasn't feasible. So do you know what? Screw it. I did not do long distance running anymore and I've never looked back. I do not do distance running for cardio. You can sue me, you can tell me how good it is, but it did not meet my three point rule. So bye bye. Bye Felicia. Next thing that I wanted to try for cardio was HIIT. It was interesting. So unlike running, you could do different moves in each one. It stimulated my mind. It wasn't tedious. It was interesting. So the fun factor was good. Feasibility. I could do it at home. Did I get fitter? Heck yes. I got so much fitter um, doing HIIT workouts, which is why these are the kind of workouts that I upload for you guys, because I love them and they are super effective. Get that three factor thing. Just keep searching until you find one because you will find the one, okay? Do not settle. Don't settle for long distance running when there's HIIT. It might be the same kind of exercise that you used to do or it might be something completely new, but just give yourself, allow yourself to find it. Be open-minded, try new things. Point number three is to try everything. Point number four. It feels like I want to say this carefully because I don't mean this in a condescending way. Like half the things that I say on this, by the way, are to me, they are things that I have learnt and I'm still learning. Humility, 
Um, and again, maybe I can say this best by talking about my experience. So when I got back into exercising, I found that I had a sense of pride about it, a sense of pride that this was my thing. This was my thing and I knew stuff. And the truth is that we're always all still learning and we all still have to live with our ears open, you know? We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. It was just being humble enough to learn what other people had. So never be too proud or too experienced or too too knowledgeable to learn. Um, because like I said in my other video of how to start a fitness journey, education is everything. Obviously take everything with a pinch of salt. Don't go changing everything just because some random person tells you to. Research things and think about things and decide for yourself. Approach your new fitness journey like a sponge, like an absorbent sponge. So watch all the videos, listen to everything. You can watch this video and you can decide actually, Sarah, you're chatting crap and you can throw me away and that's fine. That's fine. All I'm saying is that whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're watching, whatever you're learning from, do it with an open, receptive mind and attitude. And that is something that I'm, I apply and I try to apply all the time. Together, we achieve and we learn so much more than we do on our own. And I think this was, this was important for me coming from an athletic background, a professional training background to now to this fitness world, which I, I literally, guys, you wouldn't believe how I used to think. Like, I used to be like, why do people go to the gym? What is their aim? They're not even training for anything. I genuinely used to think like that. Closing off and by saying, oh no, thank you. I know everything and I don't need any more advice. The only person you're cheating is, is, is me, is you, you know? Like it says in the Bible, there is wisdom in a multitude of counsellors. And that basically means that the more people you ask and get their opinion, the more bits of wisdom you can get out. So never look down on anything, whether it's a person or a type of exercise, and realise that everything has something new to bring to the table. My fifth and my final point is to build your support network. It's really good to have a good, support network around you when it comes to your fitness journey and what I mean by that is that we all go through times of losing motivation if you've foreseen that and you've put in your life people and things that are going to help keep you on track then when you do because it is a when not an if but when you do get to that point they'll help give you that nudge that's why I started this channel essentially I wanted it to be a support network, like not just stay in, I don't even know how to say this, I don't want to offend anyone, but I didn't want to upload pictures of me at my best angle, looking great and like, just give me likes and compliments. I, I don't want that, I'm not, not asked, I'm not asked about that. What I really want is for this channel and this community to be a place where you guys get support, where we motivate each other, where we remind each other of our goals. Use the comment sections for conversation. So if someone asks a question that I haven't replied to yet, feel free to reply. Like, let's make this like a really engaging network. I think that is so, so powerful. A practical workout plan is coming in January. I'm so excited for that. So definitely invite your gym buddy or workout buddy, invite them to join this, to join this channel, to subscribe and to do the workouts with you. I hope that this video has helped you. I hope that it's been a blessing to you. I hope you have an amazing day. Um, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. No, oh, no. You know when it teases you, that's the worst. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to thumbs up, to share and to subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs> This ain't the same, they say love heals all